Call to order the August 29th meeting for the Apache Junction Health and Human Services Commission. Uh, why don't we begin with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Roll call. Commissioner Brennan. Present. Commissioner Borey. Here. Vice Chair Erickson. Present. Chairman Mitchell. Present. Okay. You have a quorum. Thank you. Consent agenda, I don't see anything on there. Correct. Do we have any public hearings? Nope. Okay. No old business? Nope. So we'll go ahead and move into new business. New business, okay. So what this meeting is, is in the contract, it states that we will hold a meeting and review the services that each service provider is to um, provide the community for the next year. And also it talks about the receipts and the accounting and what's, what is to be reported in their quarterly reports. Um, so, uh, item number one, presentation discussion on contract compliance requirements with health and human service uh, funding granted by the city. So what I have here, if you'll excuse me, is this is our city code that um, originally made up the application itself. We never had a formal application until Heather Patel was able to gather all of things together and create it a formal application. So the applications were all um, non-standard formatting. But this talks about the required documentation and then reporting requirements. So basically any nonprofit uh, agency submitting a request for allocation shall submit to the city specific documents but in not excluded or not limited to the following. And so this is what created the actual application for funding was number one. Number two talks about any nonprofit agency receiving the allocations and how they will be reporting those requirements. So we have here um, a detailed accounting of the expenditures of city funds, which would be your receipts or if you're ordering books, there's a receipt for that. Some things are a little bit more difficult to show expenditures, but there's usually a receipt somewhere. Um, it also outlines the agency's performance and accomplishments within the scope, so a written report shall be provided. Um, we do have, when these deputy clerk and I review these, you know, they're a little bit different for each one, um, so we do have leniency to, to review those and make sure that the requirements have been fulfilled. So if we look at the contract here, oops, sorry, this is the reporting requirements. So I did wanna go over this a bit um, there needs to be, and I'll meet with each nonprofit if they, if they call and they want a little bit more, but this is the standard form um, that they use for reporting for the quarterly. Um, you can tell this is an older one, but um, the statement of work. So the statement of work is here in, like th this is new leaf. So service uh, providers' duties, these are the services that they said that they would be doing. And Evie and I will be looking at each of these to see what they did in the community and how they accounted for that. Because part of the ordinance talks about you will collect a name, you'll collect an address to make sure that they are a city resident. Um, we understand that we have a significant homeless population. Um, they don't have a specific address, but it's not like they have cars and they're driving around from city to city with collecting services. Um, so sometimes that is not able to be collected, and we understand that. Um, there are some where addresses and names are collected, and we'd like to see more city residents or s those served in the community. Um, this commission also talked about the services that they would like to see not repeated by another provider. And this is where part of the contract states that the service providers will communicate with each other what services they are providing so that they're not overlapping too many services. And I know there was one. Oh, 
one thing that changed was all reports used to be submitted by paper. Um, they are now being able to be submitted electronically. And in the contract, we did ask that both the city clerk and deputy city clerk were notified through an email of the reports. Um, we are getting to them. Um, and so that's about the reports. Um, the nonprofits are here. If they would like to talk about the services that they will be providing, because I know that they had some feedback from this commission. Does the commission have anything to say at this time? Yeah, I'm sorry. So um, I appreciate that there is a question about collaboration between other facilities and making sure there's no, not a duplication. But I'm hoping there's equally collaboration on resources so that if they don't have the resources, they're able to funnel individuals to that other agency to receive those. That is part of the contract as well, and I cannot recall where it is exactly in here, but it does talk about there's a community information and referral that each nonprofit is supposed to have available that if someone does contact them, there is a list of resources that they are supposed to be able to provide the caller. I will say a council member went through the whole process of trying to get a referral service. And as you know, with services like that, they become quite tedious um, and you feel like you're just going in circles sometimes. So there is always need, always room for improvement in that area. But those, those are beyond our control and those are beyond the control of these nonprofits as well. So there are other outside agencies that are short staffed or they don't have a person answering the phone, you know, things like that. So there is some frustration that we do hear of when trying to provide those services. No, anybody else? Okay. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this is uh, CDC. CDC was, um, the CDC does very uh, cleanup projects within the city. Um, we have a council member that mentions what their next projects are, that they're calling for projects as well. So they are here tonight as well. And again, we look at the services that are provided and are they helping the community and in what aspect. Um, again, going back to the quarterly reports, um, it's a statement of work. So the statement of work here talks about everything that's listed, page two, under the sc scope of services. And if they would provide that information and then um, the contract date, completed yes or no, modification date, things like that. But this, even though it's a one page thing, this is usually accompanied by photocopies of receipts um, and then a narrative of the services that were provided and then the list of name, address, and phone number. The only entity that cannot do that for us is the food bank. Also, so that covers item uh, number one. And at this time, I'd like to ask if the, any of the nonprofits have any comments or if they have been able to reach out to other nonprofits to see about the services so that you're not overlapping services. And if not, if they would do so within the next month or two. And maybe, um, in the next report that you would send is just say who you reached out to and the cooperative services that you guys kind of agreed to either partner with or maybe you have decided that they're, they're, they will be, another entity would be better at servicing the community with that type of service. So that would be something that the nonprofits could work at. Instead of having five of you provide meals every day for the same five clients, let's just say for an example, is that instead of providing meals, you do another service that is not being offered, like maybe showers or laundry or something else that you saw a need for but didn't list it in your contract. And then just in your report, do an update and say, you know, five of us were going, we're providing meals three days, uh, th three times a day. So since we have five of them doing this, you know, we are no longer gonna be doing this, but this is a service that we're gonna provide our community residents. We can, we can flexibility with that as well. 
The other thing, so that covers number one. So if nobody has any other things, does the commission have any comments about the services or cooperation between partnerships what or anything else they'd like to see? Um, well, I just have a, a question on your form here. This is, this is just what was in the packet with them is different than what this is. Is this an updated one that each of them got? Um, it has A, B, C, and D on the smaller Exhibit B reporting requirements. And, um, you know, each one of them, it looks like, has number of certificates of completion, travel and curriculum receipts, training skills, attendees. It, it doesn't seem appropriate to the, the agencies, the smaller ones that was in the packet. So this uh, is a... Is is that a just a sample? This is a sample. Okay. Um, but I believe A, B, C, A through F are on the form, mm -hmm. and depending on the services you provide, it varies. It varies. Okay. okay. It varies. But this um, at least gives you some idea of how you might fill in your report. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will have to check because this should be on our website. Let me make a note. So if it's not blank, they could um, erase it and then put in the pertinent um, A, B, C, D. I believe it's a fillable PDF. Okay, so it would be blank. So yeah, because it, it seemed a little confusing. Um, if it is a fillable, then you should have no problem in. Right, uh, so usually number, of, number of people served is, mm -hmm. is pretty standard. Right. Um, whether you have kids or a family or you have an individual, say, at the church, um, the Genesis, um, you know, they have 35 people show up for breakfast. Um, the, the question, the thing that I am noticing is our ordinance says, you know, that you verify residency of some sort. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is going to be a resident. Some come from outside. The goal is to serve our community, not to turn, ev not to turn people away but what is your ratio of community versus outside? I will say we do have some county islands in our area, and for us, those are still our people. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't provide services to them, you know, garbage, or um, mm -hmm. they have to contract for fire and police. But when it comes to this, they're still in our community, they're shopping our community, their kids go to school here. So for this reporting thing, they, you know, we, re we understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, the type of assistance sought and received, again, this is pretty standard, whether it be meal, or showers, um, daycare, transportation, things like that. Um, numbers, numbers of volunteers served. I'm going to take a look at that one. You know, Jennifer, I think this, this is what they need to look at, this larger form, not the one that was in the packet for their individual one, because the one that was in their packet had some totally different oh, oh, oh. information on it that yes. really is not pertinent. pertinent. So, you know, if you look at the, the actual um, example, and then when you go on the website, um, I'll check and make sure that it will be a blank form, and then you can fill it out according to your individual goals and your program, where you're at at the, the point, your reporting point uh, for each quarter. So, because this, I think, to look at, this was a little, might be a little confusing. And, and that's why I brought it up, too, is, is um, Evie and I are looking at this, and while this was created, I'm not sure, I, I, you know, we always, we always look for room for improvement. So um, any feedback that the commission gives us or even our nonprofits give us about mm -hmm. the structure of this or where we can improve or something special that they're doing should definitely be listed in their narrative because it will not apply across the board. Mm -hmm. So we, tr we try to be as generic. Yeah, and sort of an esoteric question, I'll define it later. But the cells on these are infinite, right? In other words, people aren't limited to what they can put in. It expands as they fill it in. I have found some of the forms that were created are not, while others are. Oh. So um, we're trying to fix this, but we're having difficulty in fixing the form, the pages that we're finding that are not expandable, we're having some difficulty. So we're looking at maybe revamping and creating this all alone together. Mm 
mm -hmm. um, creating the whole thing over again. Yeah, I think that was one of the, the issues some of the um, it was. individuals had when they were applying, that not all the information got on the forms that we saw. You are correct. So, good. Yeah, because um, uh, it takes a while to open yeah. those up and then reformat them, and mm -hmm. we struggled with that this last year. Um, did not realize that some of the fillable forms were not that expandable. Thank you for bringing that up. I think we'll always have paper challenges, <laughs> documentation <laughs> challenges. What I'm really, really thrilled to see, however, is a number of agencies coming together within our community to serve our populations. And you folks are on the leading edge. And to get to know one another, get to closely know one another is extremely important. Um, you know, there is a, a limited amount of resources. We have a limited amount of funding that we can provide for you. But part of our objective as a commission is to help facilitate your communication with one another and getting to know where the strengths of each organization that can partner with you, where those strengths are. And, you know, if you have a weakness to share, hey, I need help in this area. Uh, or I've been gifted with a ton of this material goods and I now know where I can share it because I know that this other agency is, is serving that particular population. So please do continue to communicate with each other. And I think as you, you, your quarterly reports come out, you know, you're welcome to come each month at, that we meet and let us know what is going on, you know, um, CBC. When is your, your next big, big, big event? October 8th. October 8th. Tonight is a time when you can get up in front of us and tell us that. Um, so don't be strangers to this commission. We love to see your faces and to hear not only the challenges, but, but the, the achievements, the lives that have positively been impacted by the work that you're doing. It's extremely important. You know, we have a community that's growing. We have populations that have health and human service needs. <clears throat> You're on the forefront, and I commend you. So, okay. so the other thing I'd like to say is the police department recently, um, I think, I don't know if they have a task force yet, but they are looking at the homelessness uh, issues in our community. So I would recommend that if you notice or if you see an increase or anything that you would want to report regarding the homelessness or possible services is to contact um, PD. Um, I happened to read it on a note in the city manager's office and then I uh, heard uh, the chief mentioning it a little bit. So they are working on our homelessness in the community. I'm just not sure how far their extent is. And they're just getting started. And also for the homelessness within a community, um, I, I know that some of you have attended the Homeless Coalition meetings, and they are being held um, the first Thursday each month. And I, I, again, um, I attended when I, I normally am, am uh, teaching a, a sewing class, believe it or not, to women at uh, Hope Women's Center the same day that, and the same time that the Homeless Coalition meets. But um, I was able to be there for their first meeting um, a couple months ago, and um, an incredible growth in the number of individuals and agencies represented. Um, and that is another resource for you to really get involved, if you're not, to get involved with that. They have a spe specific meeting location, Mary? Uh, yeah, you want to talk about yeah, that would be the multi-gen center. Time? Um, 9 a.m. Trinity? Yeah, 9 a.m. on the first Thursday. Um, I've attended a couple of them. Actually, I think most of the agencies have been there. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I didn't know if um, the CDC has been there, and I don't know if Boys and Girls Club has been there, but I know I've seen... Salvation Army represented, the Food Pantry represented it, and uh, of course Genesis and 
so yeah, I've seen and calf of new leaf I've seen there too. <coughs> and if if uh, you know this is being recorded, if people aren't able to hear you, um, she said there are 17 agencies currently involved in the homeless the homeless coalition. Wonderful. And uh, again, um, you know, when we have our meetings, you're welcome to come up and announce things that are going on, or or do a call to the community, or let the community know what's going on yeah and I do have one announcement coming up about that later in the report for the information report section but yeah okay. all right if the Commission has no more on item number one we'll move to item number two I think I'd just like to say one other thing it's just that um, what the City Council tends to push back on is the duplication of efforts and that's why we keep bringing this up and it sounds kind of you know, like a, what is the, the expression, beating a dead horse, like we don't want to keep bringing it up, but that keeps getting brought to our attention. So with the funding coming out every year, we want to make sure that it's going to not duplicate efforts. And, you know, things that come up, like I heard the, um, the food bank was experimenting with mobile delivery of food, but Salvation Army, they're getting money specifically to do the delivery of food mobily. So maybe partnerships like that can be connected. And, you know, I hope, um, does everybody in here have everybody's contact information? Do you guys know how to reach the agencies? And if not, please do that, you know, during this time when everybody's here. Maybe that's something our office can share, kind of as <coughs> a, like, always in the footer of who the contact is and who a phone number if there are no objections to that. Okay. So the other thing, as you know, council um, has changed this commission. It will be a seven member commission instead of five. And appointments, interviews and appointments um, will be done in October. So right now the applications process is open until September 15th, which is a Thursday. And then council will interview on Monday the 17th at a work study session and they will make appointments on Tuesday night on the 18th. So from the time the application process closes on the 15th of September, then staff and I will be creating the um, information for council. They will have another two weeks to look at everything, make their notes, and then they'll move forward on their uh, October council meeting. So you are changing from a five member to a seven member commission. This commission has flip flop back and forth between seven and five over the years. <laughs> Um, and we'll just see how that one goes. <laughs> so that's changing. And then I think, do I have any comments on that one? I'm sorry. Okay. And then I've co already covered number three, which is regarding the quarterly uh, report documentation submittals in the contract. It doesn't talk so much about it, but it's the ordinance that talks about um, names, addresses, um, whether they're city residents or non-city residents, how to determine that. Um, my thing is, if you want to vote and you are a homeless individual, you can use the Superior Court as an address. You can list the northeast corner of and list your street names, and that will still get you a voter registration card. So my thing is, whether you're homeless or not, you're still part of our community, and if you can just list whether they're a resident or not, um, it goes back to, sorry. Um, so number of people served, um, type of assistance they sought. So if you look at um, this here, you're looking at various support services for domestic violence, you're looking at legal advocacy services, um, provide resources of other support and services and community resources. So number six here is that list of community information referral services that's out there, whether it be through Pinal, Pinal County, Maricopa County, um, through the chamber, anything that would be a resource for individuals regardless of their, their circumstances. Excuse me, Jennifer. So um, I think someone approached at a prior meeting that 
delineating addresses and names revealed some breach of confidentiality. S people wanting anonymity, and I can see where in domestic violence victims, that might be really pertinent. So then is the requirement that in the one form, they're listed generically, and then perhaps there's some other way to define that. I, I don't know. I don't want to betray anybody's confidences and or create problems and or vulnerability. But I appreciate that there's got to be some accountability. And just like we talked with CDC about the um, issue of codes, my recommendation would be that you bundle codes. You say, and I'm just going to make up one. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Um, code 7846, there were five of them, or something like that. And then if you need addresses and other things on those supplementary pages, that would be there. Because my assumption is this form may be very public. Is that correct? It is, and okay. you're correct. Yeah. So anything that's uh, domestic violence or the food bank, um, they're under uh, federal guidelines where they cannot release names and addresses. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll just, you know, family one or family A, um, they'll say resident, yes or no. And this is where you know you you trust, um, and and I really don't have that issue. Um, you know, like I said, we have county island areas. They are still part of our community. They they are still very much a part of AJ. Um, this is about community and helping community. So, but you're right. There there are things that we do not share, um, and those do not come in on the report. Okay, good. So, yeah. So. And if I could offer a suggestion from the pit count, um, some people didn't want to give their name but we could use initials and a date of birth. And so that way, it's hard to pinpoint who exactly the person is. Um, though it was kind of funny because with Trinity and Genesis Project, she knew exactly who some people were, so we were able to identify the duplicates, but that's just because we have that understanding of the community. So yeah. there were some duplicates that were weeded out, but that's probably a good solution if there's anything that there's a worry about confidentiality. True, very true. And the other thing too is, you know, when we think about our, our nonprofits is um, some of them are very small. Um, their funding is not very big. And the resources and the accounting uh, tracking can be very cumbersome. And they just do their best and they give us their best. And that's what that is. So the same thing with an audited report. Um, unless you have defined which type of accounting methodology you are following, which type of reporting you are requiring, the auditing, Again, since we haven't defined anything, we're pretty, we have a, a great leeway to figure out how we take audited reports. Um, you know, if, whether it be a CPA or an outside <coughs> accountant rather than a CPA, uh, a QuickBooks report, things like that. So it doesn't have to be a full blown audited report like, uh, let's say, Fry's does or a Circle K. That is all I have on number three. Okay, so then we move on to item number H on the agenda, which is information and reports. Um, this is a good time to announce any upcoming events, and I have a stack of them, but I'll see if any of the other commission members would like to make any announcements. You know, the, the Artists of the Superstitions have um, two events annually, and I would be remiss in saying I know exactly, but it's usually the first no weekend in November and these are all artisans from the area, both specific to Apache Junction, but as well outlying areas to, to Gold Canyon, et cetera. And um, their studio exhibits and a variety of artisans are participating in that. What's the location? It's, it's variable. They'll have a map and they have various studio sites. It's, it's a tour, if you will. And I, I spoke with Liz Langbach today, um, and she um, has, well, they have a, um, uh, posted on the website, it's a strategic plan survey that really talks about um, recreation services and what the needs are perceived by the public. And the survey is open until the first week in December, and you have an opportunity to win a gift card uh, from Amazon and, and I guess other prizes. But um, all you need to do is go on the website um, for the City of Apache Junction 
and look at the Park and Recreation Services portion of the website, there is a um, paragraph there that um, has a link to the survey. If you're not savvy with computers and can physically get into the multi-gen center, you can um, you know, get a link there and take it, um, take the survey. But I, I would really encourage our community members to um, really get onto that page, do the survey. It, it asks what your ideas are, what would you like to see? One of the things that I saw in a couple of communities across the country were, and I don't know, maybe there is something here in this community I haven't found yet, but it's <coughs> an exercise, an adult exercise circuit for seniors or for adults. It's actually accessible for people with disabilities, hmm. but it, it's equipment, it's physical equipment that you can do a circuit and it's outside. It's wonderful. Wouldn't our, our seniors, wouldn't our adults <coughs> love to have our winter visitors love to have something like that in one of our parks where they could daily go to or you know, <laughs> however often and um, get some outdoor exercise using some equipment that is made specifically for adults and it's outdoor weatherproof. So <laughs> yeah, but uh, good idea. So that's one, one of the things that came up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we have some of those uh, brochures, you know, for the survey at the chamber too, so you can pick Good. up a, them up there too. So just a, a, a general possibility. Um, I'm a psychiatrist, board certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. At any rate, um, I don't know how many of you have need for some education about commitment law. And I would be more than willing to meet at a given time with you all or individually with you to define those parameters so that you know what resources you have potentially available to you to be able to use to implement, to be able to give people some help. So let me know. What, if I may ask, what number would you, how would you like people to reach you, Dr. Brennan? You know, it, it, if you don't mind being an intermediary, um, and then that can just be forwarded to me at my email, that'd be perfect. Okay. And, uh, just in sharing information, I know in the past I have mentioned it to people who have been in our audience. And, you know, there is a housing is extremely short in our community. Um, and I, you know, at least once a month run across an individual, and I'm not out in the community as much as all of you, but an individual who's about to lose their housing, whose husband died and they can't afford the rent anymore, <coughs> and they're 79 years old or 84 years old, and they're gonna be homeless. Um, shared housing is something that I really have a passion for. I think is extremely possible. There are programs out there that if all of you, you know, have an interest in and can check it out um, to maybe partner with some outside agencies that can help establish some bona fide shared housing programs within our community. It can be extremely frightening for an individual that, you know, calls someone and says, hey, can I come and live with you? And they don't know anything about their background, if they're gonna be you know, able to support the housing that they're in, or if they themselves will be at risk. Um, going through a program that actually does have um, the ability to help individuals identify a place to live, know that it's safe for them, that it's affordable for them, it can alleviate a lot of the, the health issues that, they, that would come up and um, would serve our community extremely well. So I, I do encourage you and anyone that's listening, if you have ideas, to really share them with our commission um, or with each other and um, see if we can get more support for our, our community members that 
have a, a difficult time finding housing. You if know, I there may. was a recent article that addressed the issue of the cost of housing for students, college students, and that there was a move predominantly in the East. It's not necessary. There may be here. I mean, locally, I don't know. <coughs> but students would then come in and be able to provide given services to the individual that was there and meet some of their needs to be um, taken to appointments, etc. Obviously, they wouldn't do it if it conflicted with their classwork, but it was a mutual deal. The students were expected to pay some rent, and that mitigated the cost to whoever was providing the place. And it, the, the results, though probably rather premature, were really rather remarkable. People felt that they had a better understanding, intergenerational, mm -hmm. and they really appreciated the help that they were getting both ways. So just another idea. Yeah. And lastly, um, you know, I, I think we were pretty remiss. Um, Pinal County offered free tuition at the community colleges all of last year. I don't know if that persists. I don't know. Um, they may even have some provision to be able to just have um, related fees and, and, and other costs instead of the, the straight um, um, regular semestral tuition. There was a report of a woman who completed her nursing degree. She had had one semester left and because of family issues, debts, etc., this was a real benefit for her. And when she finished, she stepped into a job that starts at $50,000 a year. That's pretty remarkable. And I believe NAU has an equal program, and I don't know if it's for all state residents or not, but it might be something to explore. It's an interesting comment, too, because I'm not sure if our nonprofits hear parents talking about the struggles, but it's, it's a great resource uh, of information to at least pass along if they are hearing parents talk about struggles. I just I don't know what goes on in those communities. <coughs> Anything from you, Chairman Mitchell? Plenty. On, on, <laughs> Just wait. On, uh, on H? Yeah, on item H. Okay. Um, first of all, the Rotary Club of Superstition Mountains invites everybody to be a guest. Um, we meet every noon at the Gold Canyon Golf Resort, um, and we'd, we've seen a lot of the faces in the crowd, so we'd love to have you guys come as guests at some point. Um, we had a recent guest from the Superstition Mountain Harley-Davidson shop. Uh, Greg Hughes, he's one of the administrators there, but he goes by the nickname Troll. Um, sounds like a bad nickname, but he's a really nice guy. But he has Troll's Teddy Bear Run. So if any agencies have teddy bears there, um, not planning on donating them, we're collecting those for donation. Um, so we have a box at our Rotary Club meetings for the collection of the teddy bears. Um, I can provide my phone number as 630 297 9204. So any text or call if there's teddy bears to collect to donate, um, I will just drive by and pick them up because I think that's a pretty good thing. And um, the website is trollsteddybearrun.com for that particular thing. And that will be going on until the first Saturday of December. And who is that benefiting, Chairman Mitchell? Um, what do just they the do with children them? in the community. I know that they distribute them a lot to the children, they're very encouraging. Um, and I don't know, think back to your childhood if you ever had a teddy bear or something. You know, just something encouraging. And I know Troll has the mechanisms to distribute those. So if we do have any that are out there, I think they ask that they're just new teddy bears. So instead of something that could have allergens or, you know, not be in the best shape or anything like that. But so that's the first one. Um, regarding the Apache Junction Homeless Coalition, um, Sergeant Brian Pennington has sent out an email that there's going to be a cleanup taking place. The date is September 8th, um, 2022, 6.30 a.m. And the location is the desert lot off of the plaza across from Hackers. I don't know the specific, oh, I think, it, yeah, 310 North Plaza Drive in Apache Junction. And uh, the police department's going to be there. I think that we're encouraging a lot of agencies to be there. Um, they're gonna be cleaning up the land where a lot of people had been camping and things like that. 
Um, so we want to get resources and support to anybody who might be there and just try to offer up, you know, what we can as a community. Um, Saturday, October 8th is Make a Difference Day. I've made that announcement at Rotary and we plan to have several volunteers attend, um, but we'd love to have everybody in the community come to that. And I don't know um, if anybody wants to stand up from AJCDC to talk about the specific sites, but all I have down here is that we meet at the focal point at um, 8 a.m. So, yeah. Yeah, this if, is a good opportunity. If, if, if we'll wait just a minute. If you'll finish your uh, remarks, I'm going to invite out of out of the ordinary, invite each yep. of the nonprofits to come up and talk about any events that they've got going on. Oh, sure. We'll do it okay. that way. Thank yeah. you. Then that's all I had was that um, HACDC, and then if you, they want to take a chance to. Okay. Yeah, because so I don't have the specific um, site locations, and I know that those can be changing. Okay. So then at this time, each, if any of the nonprofits would like to talk about any special events that they are having. The other thing is um, what you are seeing as a challenge or a change in the community that you would like the board uh, commission to know about um, or any, anything that you could ask for that could help your nonprofit, maybe from the city or from the commission. We'll start with CDC. Yes, please speak into the mic. <laughs> I'm Jim Duncan, the vice chairman of the AJCDC. I have with me Dave Waldron, our chairman, and Yvonne Cruiser, our newly ec elected treasurer. So um, thank you for allowing me to come up. Yes, uh, October 8th, we have sign up starting at 730 in the morning at the focal point. We have a five slide presentation that we're going to be getting out into the social media and so forth but there's plenty of parking. It actually shows where to park and everything else. So it's pretty much right across from Flatiron Park. We've got five locations, or six locations next year. We had five last year, so we're gonna go one up this year. And they're all pretty well tight-knit, but they are Silly Mountain Botanical Walk, which is the favorite for the city. And uh, we hope to have many, many people show up out there because it can handle <laughs> quite a few. And we have the Flatiron, park where we're going to do three different events there. One of them is going to be the Think Desert cleanup area, which is right behind Ramada. The second one is going to be rock painting, which is done for mostly the youth at the Ramada itself. And the third one is going to be a continuation of the mural this year. Parks and Rec has said that they want to continue that and they have a, um, a person in charge, I think his name is Josh, if I'm not mistaken. So, and that's gonna be signups on that one. So we really wanna make sure that we get the signups on the website. Patsy Junction, cdc.com is the website. And then we have the Focal Point Brick Memorial Revitalization Project that we do every year. And we try and pound out as many of those as we can. I think we got like 15 or so last year. So um, let's see, is that six? Oh, we have a neighborhood cleanup too. So it's a continuation as we do our projects throughout the year. We run across certain areas in the neighborhoods that we, uh, people just come out and talk to us and say, hey, we could use this and use that. And this happens to be at 20th Avenue and Idaho Road. So it's gonna be both sides. It's a private driveway, plenty of room to get in there. Uh, 20th Avenue, my, my understanding is 20th Avenue is a private road, but it goes in and goes around. Um, but we've got two sides of that whole area there and it actually will benefit the city a lot because you can see as you drive up Idaho what, uh, what's going on over there. So it'll really clean it up and make it look good. And I'm willing to answer any questions if anybody has anything. It's sign up at 7.30, 7.30 to 8. We're gonna take a picture. Hopefully we're gonna get a really good drone shot again. We've talked to uh, Matt McNulty and he's gonna volunteer services uh, this year. So eight o'clock sharp, we gotta take that picture so everybody can get to their, sh to their <laughs> locations and get going. Yep. And then uh, a lot of good things. We wanna thank the football team is volunteering to come out this year, although they have an out of town game uh, the night before, it's in Kingman. So the varsity <laughs> may sleep in and they're gonna come in and maybe clean up later. <laughs> We're gonna let them come up about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, but the JV may come out and hopefully they can start the process. So it's gonna be a really good effort. I know the student council at the high school signed up, and we've got many others, and thank you for mentioning that. Please, it helps us understand the number of tools, 
the materials that we need and the things we want to accomplish at each site. So we're working with uh, Master Gardeners this year out at uh, Silly Mountain Botanical Walk and uh, the Parks and Rec, obviously, and Public Services is going to supply us some of the dumpsters that we're going to be using. So mm -hmm. we've gotten a, a grant from Walmart already, $750 grant from Walmart. Mm -hmm. Got to get all our sponsors in. So we thank everybody for all of the things that are going on, and we're just now starting to get that pushed through. So thank you. One quick question. Can people sign up for the cleanup day through the website so that you have a head count prior as well? Yes. Okay. We, we have... We have two different areas to sign up on the website. So if you want to just sign up for Make a Difference Day only, there is a, a click on that. If there's an ongoing volunteer that you would like to do, which we also have, and there's another click for that. So it's pretty easy to do. Once you s submit your information, we pretty much get it, well, we're an all-volunteer <laughs> board, so it depends on the day of the week when we get it. <laughs> but uh, it's an automated process, so we usually get it within the week or so and can get back to you and let you know. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. Hi, Dana Martinez with the CAFA and Elif. Thank you for letting me make some announcements today. Um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we have several activities going on uh, throughout the community. Most specifically on October 15th, we are working um, with the Pinal County Attorney's Office to sponsor a domestic violence uh, walk. Um, we're also working with AJ Police Department and AJ Parks and Recs. Um, the theme is Break the Silence and the Violence. And it will be held at Prospector Park. Um, Jeff, I don't remember the time. <laughs> I have 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Okay. on the flyer that I just saw at 3015 North Idaho Road. I think 7 a.m. is registration. I think the walk starts at 8, and then there will be activities and things going on until noon on that mm -hmm. particular day. Um, also, on October 28th, we are sponsoring a trunk or treat. Um, that's the Friday before Halloween. And so that will be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., in the parking lot, we are taking up the whole back parking lot of the um, 879 North Plaza Drive area. We have um, the police department that's gonna come, the fire department's gonna bring a big truck, um, we're gonna have a bouncy house, we're gonna have um, food for the community, we'll be providing hot dogs, chips, and water bottles uh, for no charge. And then all of our staff and some of our <coughs> partners will be providing, um, you know, decorated trunks for kids to come and trick or treat at. Um, so that'll be a fun event for the entire community. Um, if anybody wants more information, you can reach out to us at CAFA. Our phone number is 480-982-0205. That's our admin building number. <clears throat> And we could use more vendors if anybody wants to be a vendor for the trunk or treat as well. And then also I just wanted to bring up some information related specifically to a new leaf. We have received a Pinal County grant to start um, TBRA housing, tenant-based rental assistance housing within Pinal County. Um, we want to keep it as much in Apache Junction as we can. It will enable us to house I think up to 15 households. Um, we're waiting for HUD to finalize the contract and get it to Pinal County before we can start. But we are looking for two things. One, we need to hire a TBRA um, case manager for the project. So if you want, know anybody that's looking for a job, um, please have them go to a New Leafs website or Indeed, I think we have things posted on Indeed. Um, we really want to hire somebody from the community. That would be our, that would be great. And then also, um, this is a new lease first venture into Pinal County specifically for housing. So we need to really start working on landlord engagement. Um, so if you know any landlords that might be willing to per, to rent, it's going to be subsidized housing, so they're going to be guaranteed their rent. Um, again, please reach out, and we can. We, we're working with Home Inc. and they'll start doing the landlord engagement, but we have to have the contract in place first. So anything we can start doing now to engage landlords for that housing 
um, we would love to start that. So that's all I have. Thank you. That's great news. I had Thank two you. quick questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for the people that are eligible for that housing, is it only the clients of New Leaf or is it anybody in the community? No, so right now the plan <coughs> is that they will be taking names off of the um, by name list for the Pinal County Coordinated um, Entry System. And then if they take names off of that list and they, they can't get people engaged, um, I think the next step would be Trinity to come to Genesis Project and see who you guys have ready for housing there. So um, we'll be connecting with you very soon. <laughs> Yeah. Once we get a case manager hired. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we do have to kind of follow coordinate entry and by getting people off the binding list. Um, <clears throat> but yes. And TBRA is up to two years of assistance. Mm. So oh. yeah, it, it helps provide a little bit longer term stability. Mm -hmm. We've had a really good success with it in um, Surprise and in Glendale. Um, really positive success. So a little bit different than Rapidry Housing. And just regarding the trunk or treat, I know the Kiwanis Club was um, hoping to get candy and be a vendor, but then I think they reached out and said um, they were a nonprofit, so nonprofits are doing games only as opposed to the trunks with candy. Is there any clarification on that for the nonprofits that? No, they can they can do trunks with candy too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was just some confusion about that. I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're more than welcome to come and provide candy as well. They don't have to do like you know, informational booths or anything like that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Darla Malone with the Salvation Army. And what we've seen is this past month alone and we still have two days of food distribution to do, is we've seen over 130 new people come in and ask for food. Um, so that's on top of those we were already assisting that are repeats from previous. Our Christmas apps will, applications will be coming out in mid-October. It, it's an online application for people that have a problem doing the online, Maybe they don't have internet service. We do invite them to come to us and we do applications with them. We do the intake. On November 7th, um, Trinity with Project Genesis as well as Cheryl Bigelow, my homeless outreach person, is working on what they're calling Project Connection. Don't ask me exactly what that is. It hasn't happened while I've been here. So, but I believe Trinity knows is, yeah, Trinity's helping with that. So that's going to be on November 7th at the Salvation Army. And I believe the time is from 2 to 6. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up. We will be helping people, families with Thanksgiving assistance, food, as well as we will have at Christmas. This year we'll also be delivering meals already prepared to um, those that are homebound that are unable to get out and about. And we actually get those meals. We have worked for the last two years with Genesis Project. And they supply the meals to us, and we deliver to the homebound. That's on Thanksgiving and Christmas. We also will be doing our Christmas distribution, of course, just before Christmas, where we distribute toys and food to those in need. And that, of course, is taken through the application process. And then, of course, if you're wanting to bell ring, you've got a little bit extra time, please let us know. Um, we're always looking for people that are willing to bell ring, even if it's for a couple hours. And that will be starting the day after Thanksgiving officially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trinity Cole with Genesis Project. Um, so to start off, so Project Connect is um, an event where 
we invite all agencies to come together in one location so we've got a one-stop shop environment for anyone needing services in the area. So all of the agencies that we spoke about um, being involved with the Apache Junction Homeless Coalition will come together, have booths set up, um, we'll also have food and um, drinks for everybody that comes, and then those people will have opportunity to visit all of the resources in um, one day at one time. So that's what the Project Connect event is. We haven't had one um, since before COVID, so this is really exciting to be able to get one back on the books and get that out to the community. Um, just circling back to the, the talk about making collaborations with the other agencies, I just want to reassure all of you guys that it is happening and it happens in an incredible level. So um, I can list off what we've done with every agency here, but every agency represented here, I feel that we, um, not only know each other, but work closely together. Um, even as far as the CDC, when they've got a cleanup going on, we have volunteers that will come by Genesis and get a meal to take out to um, the homeowner that they're serving so that they can provide that person a hot meal. Um, and then as those people may be receiving follow-up services, then those other agencies have been able to bring people down to meet with us. Um, we're working as the AJ Homeless Coalition on a can opener drive. A lot of people don't know the value of a can opener. And so um, that went as far even to the police department. So um, as most people know, Sergeant Clay Leonard is working on homeless stuff <coughs> now coming up and he had gotten a hold of me and um, interacted with a homeless person and he said, I asked if she had a can opener and she did not. So and I remembered it from the meeting so I went and got her a can opener. Um, as a coalition, we're coming together to work on haircuts as well. Haircuts are a big thing, not only for the homeless but for um, income restricted individuals that have you know more month than money so we're working to get those things in line we're going to be sharing our can openers with the food bank because that's another question that they have to ask individuals is do you have a can opener to open these cans and so just getting those little things um up and rolling a uh, darla mentioned that we provide the meals for thanksgiving and then christmas and easter as well for them to um deliver out to their homebound individuals because we prepare the food there so we don't need to duplicate and have their or duplicate have them prepare when they deliver we don't deliver so it was a perfect marrying of our um, resources to meet the needs of more people in the community um, Genesis Project is seeing the same thing that the other agencies are. We've got more people than ever. Every day we're seeing new faces. We've seen an influx of um, elderly individuals that cannot keep up with the cost of food. Um, one gentleman in particular told me the other day, um, I know you usually don't see me until the last two weeks of the month, but now my food bu budget only lasts one week instead of two weeks. So um, the cost of food is having a huge impact on our community, especially those with a fixed income that can't um, pull money from other areas of their budget when they're budgeted down to the penny in a lot of circumstances. Um, our navigator services at Genesis Project, now that um, we received that funding and he is there Tuesday through Thursday, He's pretty well booked all of those days. We um, are seeing a lot of people come in from the community. These are not just Genesis guests. We're getting lots of messages. He's getting lots of calls and texts. Um, he's connected with social services, or I'm sorry, social um, workers over at the local hospitals who have been referring people to him to get um, other needs met that they have. So we've been working along with that and then um, clothing is a big need that we have right now, specifically men's clothing. We're going through clothing quicker than we're getting it donated. So men's clothing um, is a big need. Also towels for shower voucher day. So those are two things that um, we would love to ask the community to donate to us for what we've got going on right now. And then on, on November 5th, we are going to have our annual tea party fundraiser for Genesis Project. So we're very excited to have that back on the calendar. We haven't had one since November. So if anybody would like to find out more about sponsoring a table and coming to our benefit tea party, we would love that. <laughs> Any questions? I have a, may I Chairman Mitchell? <coughs> I have a question. Yeah. So you talked about the November 7th uh, project, let me see, Connect. Yes. Project Connection. Is that, it's been years, is that where um, you'll also have somebody from the DMV there to help people get a driver's license or get 
Arizona ID and, and social security cards? Is that the same thing? I do not recall DMV being there in past years, but it's been a few years. Okay. So um, that's an agency that we could reach out to. Can you write that down for me, Darla? I didn't bring any or, or, to or maybe so. take someone, if you've got a driver, to take them to DMV. I, it's just something that happened in Chandler and other cities I worked for is that there would be a large group of agencies that you say, and um, sometimes there would be a driver to take somebody to Social Security office, because usually they don't come to you, um, or to someone to go get either their driver's license, birth certificate, or an Arizona ID. And I think Chandler had someone that was a volunteer that would drive people to these places. I just didn't know if since DMV would be closed, if there would be... Um, so... Yeah. And what is that? Home ID cards? Okay. I don't recall them being um, at any of the prior Project Connects. Um, and I know like our, our navigator um, does take people to get their um, IDs and social security cards. He actually um, told me just before this meeting, we have done 42 IDs so far this year. Because so, usually um, that's the issue, yeah, ID. It's, it's a big deal. So, it is. Um, and okay. what um, Dana had uh, touched on a little bit about looking to, uh, to Genesis for people um, that need housing, we've also been working really hard in understanding what those parameters are of having an individual paperwork ready so that um, when something like that does come up and she can contact me and I can say they're paperwork ready. So that's another part of the process. So when you... Um, have those by name lists or um, into that HDMI system and you have people that do not have their documents ready or are not returning calls, then you wanna have the next person um, document ready. So that is part of our process. And um, we'll have, our navigator will be there for the Project Connect event. And if nothing else, we can set them appointments up. It's on a Monday, we could set them appointments up for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, any of those days and take them to get those documents. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Pat Callahan, and I'm with the Food Bank. I'm on the board. And um, I got thrown into this at the last minute, so bear with me. Um, when you were talking about how many new people we're experiencing, on Friday we had 12 new sign up. And when I say 12 new, I don't mean just 12 people. It can be a family of eight or a family of one. So to date, we've had 8,202 households, but we've served 22,260 people. So what we also have a new executive director. And with that, we're planning more events and stuff. So some of these are still in the plans. We've got a chili challenge coming up in October. And so watch our website for that. And the golf event, which is the biggest thing that we do to raise funds for us, is December the 20th. And this year, it's going to be held out in Gold Canyon on the dinosaur course out there. So we're just finalizing all that and getting sponsors and everything for that too. We also have just partnered with the Treasure Box because they've been doing the farmer's market. And so we are going to start hosting that over at our facility and that's the first Saturday of every month. And we'll start that in October. So what will happen is some of the food that is left over and stuff, then we'll have that. So that will help us with what we do. And on that, we can share with some of, like we've shared with Genesis and stuff in the past and Salvation Army. Salvation Army, I know, does delivery. And we always refer <coughs> when somebody calls and wants to do delivery. So when Jeff, you said something about 
us doing delivery. I know nothing about that. So that's interesting because it's not something we have in our plans. No, that was just a survey that they were giving out the food bank previously, ah. which I don't know if that changed with the with Eric stepping in no. other than my, you know. But no. I was just thinking like that survey, logical conclusion is if there's a need for that, we might already have services that can provide it as opposed exactly. to having to do duplication. And we'll get lots of calls on that at different times, especially they've been increasing with elderly and everything and somebody not their cars broke down and everything and so then we always refer them to the Salvation Army and we have that list and we always give them the phone number so they don't have to try to look it up so your data is over what time span because you just gave us numbers. what I just gave you was from January the 1st 2021 to August. Okay, so or, I'm sorry. That was December. From that was January the 21st to August of this year. So it would have been. Mm -hmm. It's comparable. It's a, it's a year and eight months. It's a year, because I made it go from January of 2022 oh. to date. And that was what I was pulling at three o'clock this afternoon for you. So, but we are really, I'm like, we're like everybody else. Everybody's coming in. And what happens is now all the snowbirds start coming back and we'll experience those too. Okay. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Chairman Mitchell, if I may, the, the mayor also yep. announced at the last council meeting about the, uh, uh, food bank and the event that they're doing on the first Saturday every month with the treasure box and I believe he said that there were over 600 people that showed up that Saturday wow. for uh, fruits and vegetables and it was quite an event that's all I have thank you Hello everyone, Emily Dennis with Boys and Girls Clubs of the Valley, representing Superstition tonight. Um, just a few updates on our programming. So we just finished our summer programming and we are now back to school. Uh, we did see an average daily attendance of 104 kids in the month of July compared to 82 last summer in July. So super excited about that. Um, and our membership as well, year to year comparison, was 318 members last year in 2021 and we're up to 627 this year. So um, lots of growth happening there there. As you know, we moved sites uh, earlier this year and have seen great um, response to that. Uh, we also had a shopping event this past Saturday at Kohl's down the street and took 11 uh, Apache Junction residents uh, to that on a $150 back to school shopping spree. So we had 11 volunteers paired up with those kids and they had a great time. And I have a picture too. I'm happy to share that afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did have some reporting questions too, which I can follow up with Jennifer after this, uh, as far as the addresses too, I'd like to kind of address that because we do have some concerns about sharing the yes. kid addresses as well. So yeah. um, that's it for us. Thank you. Any cool. questions? Um, are you also a hydration um, station site? Yeah, you know, station site. I don't believe so, but I can follow up on that. Okay, because that was on a Salvation Army, or a, I think there were quite a few um, different nonprofits that were doing the hydration stations and they had boys and girls club and I thought that was kind of a strange because of your new location. Yeah, and uh, it being a closed campus, I can't imagine I, that would be. Yeah. Um, but I'm certainly happy to follow up on and that. That might be uh, WACFUD, the water utilities. I'm not sure who does the hydration stations here in the city. S Salvation it, Army does oh, and. Um, well, I mean, who's in charge of, of all of that listing, which location? Um, designating the locations. When I worked for Chandler, there was a city department that did that. Uh -huh. So I I, I'm not sure who does that here in the city. I can check that out. I have a quick question, yeah. if I may, Emily. You rattled off some numbers. Something about 627 is this year's number versus 318 from Correct. last year. So that year? January through July time frame, year to year comparison. So 318 last year were our members, and then 627 members this year. Members. Okay. Of course, we Thank don't you. see all those kids at one time, but they are registered mm -hmm. members that attend the club. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Outstanding growth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a few more announcements. Some of them were just mentioned by the agency, so thank you for doing that. Um, legislation closes tomorrow for the um, Chamber of Commerce golf tournament. 
Uh, that's going to be at Las Sendas Golf Club on September 16th. And um, I believe you can just go to the ajchamber.com website to register for that if you're interested. Um, we had a speaker from Horizon Health and Wellness at Rotary, and they mentioned that they have volunteer days in the garden and on Thursdays from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. and Saturdays from 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. The garden location is 625 North Plaza Drive in Apache Junction, and I believe they have gardeners there, and it's just a good community activity if you're interested. Uh, finally, we had a presentation from uh, Nancy Fassbender talking about uh, wreaths across America. This one's interesting because they do have a fundraising component for nonprofits as well. Um, they want to honor our veterans by placing wreaths, and this year I believe it's at Mountain View Cemetery. I um, think they had a goal of 1,000 more wreaths. They've already got commitments for 2,000 wreaths. Um, but how you can help out is if, an, if you are interested in having um, people buy a wreath, there's a QR code they'll set up for your nonprofit. And then essentially you get $5 back for the nonprofit every time somebody purchases a wreath to place on a veteran's grave at Mountain View. Um, so Nancy can be reached. Um, I'll just give you her phone number. I'm sure she doesn't mind. Uh, 520 280-4715, and that's Nancy Fassbender. Um, and she did present that at the Chamber of Commerce as well. But um, sounds like a decent little thing that any nonprofit could take advantage of in terms of fundraising and kind of implement to help honor veterans in the community. And with that, that's all the information that I have, so. Mm -hmm. uh, staff liaisons report moving to item I on the agenda. Actually, I... I think, does the commission have anything under H? Anything else the commission members wish to oh. speak on? Yeah, I don't think there was any other. Or wait, oh. One of the things I, I was going to ask you too, the, it is still open for applicants to join the commission till yes. the 15th of September? Yes. Um, I, I have been on the commission for the last six years and I have thoroughly um, enjoyed the time that I have spent on the commission, and I have seen incredible growth in our community and and within our nonprofits, um, the amount of uh, communication, the amount of partnership, um, it it is just thrilling to see how our community is really stepping up to meet the needs of our populations. And I would encourage anyone that is listening to us um, at home tonight even, uh, that uh, if they have a passion for our community, to really consider using your skills, your background, um, your passion to apply to be a part of the commission. And I think the more people that we have applying, um, you know, there, we need a variety of individuals that have background in many different areas of service. And so I, I highly would recommend that, um, you know, people would consider you, they can call you, talk to you, they can contact us, talk to us about what does a job entail. Um, it's not a lot, you know, and I myself, you know, will be stepping down for a time. I'll be coming back sometime in the future, but right now I think, you know, um, uh, I really want to see people, other people come and step up and use your talents and your abilities. Um, and thank you so much, Jennifer, for all you do for the city of Apache Junction. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, people don't realize the amount of work that you have to do and just the detail that's involved, um, the excellence upon which you are able to, to carry out the all the things that to make our community <laughs> work. <laughs> and and um, you know, my, my deepest appreciation. I have to, to say you. I really, really enjoy being here in AJ. Yeah. I really do. And uh, to the, the members on the commission, those that have served and continue to serve, you know, thank you so much. Um, I'll be available, and I have <laughs> ideas for our community. 
but um, I'm looking forward to the, the blank chairs to be filled and a very dynamic um, group of people here each time that the commission meets. Just look at the information that has been sent out to our community tonight. In the past, there has not been that avenue. In the future, I really encourage you to come to bring your, your, your successes, to bring your challenges, to challenge a community to come and to help you. Um, you have a voice here. And um, thank you for coming tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you at future meetings. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, just notes, notes, notes. Um, staff liaison's report. The um, what's new for me is the uh, PD getting involved with uh, the homelessness and what they're everything that they're doing there and working with our nonprofits. Something that I heard this morning um, is if you are interested in hearing of all the development that's going on in this city, but actually where the phase of development is, planning and zoning. Watch their agendas. Um, there will be a report from staff regarding all of the development that is currently undergoing uh, here in AJ. It looks like a tremendous amount. Eventually, it will be a tremendous amount. But with supply chain issues, um, there's a lot of slowing down or halting of construction. So say we have 50 projects going, we may have five that are still under construction. So those are just random numbers. They are. Uh, just used for an example, but PNZ will be holding an, um, uh, a meeting. Uh, I'm not sure which agenda they plan on hosting that uh, summary of what's going on in the community, but I think it would be great uh, for our nonprofits and the whole community to understand while you see all this development and you see this annexation um, and how it might impact our community, there is a delay in all of that coming to fruition. There, there is a delay. Other than that, I have no other reports or updates. Excellent. Um, I do not know if we're going to have a meeting next month. Do you have that information on hand? So what I show is the regular meetings are held the fourth Thursday of every month. Um, that is on the 26th. At this time, I don't have any items, but that will be the new board and commission members after council. Nope. Oh, my month. apologies. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, I'm three months forward and three months back. Um, if that's your regularly scheduled meeting, if the board or commission members have items to bring forward, uh, you'll let Chairman Mitchell know. He will be in touch with me. So until that time, I, I that's the regular scheduled meeting. Is that the fourth Monday or the fourth Thursday? Did I say the fourth Monday? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Thursdays. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Thursday's a popular day. <laughs> and the new commission members are selected, was it October 17th? Or? 17th will be the work study session for interviews, and the 18th will be appointment by the council. And that's October, okay, so the, yeah. there may not be a meeting on the 26th, but if so, it would be at 5 p.m. on the 26th of September. Correct. Okay, and obviously this would be the location. Um, with that, 618, we'll go ahead and adjourn the, the meeting tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.